Hey loves, welcome back. I have some fun Dollar Tree DIYs for you guys that would be perfect for rustic country farmhouse decor. The first item is a candle and for this, you'll need either a leftover candle you don't mind melting down to reuse, or you can pick up these tall glass white pillar candles that Dollar Tree carries. Go ahead and place it in a small saucepan of boiling water. Just make sure you aren't getting water inside the candle. Also, ideally, you'll need one and a half of these to make one of the candle jars that we're making today. So if you want to, go ahead and get two of these jars and three pillar candles to melt down. And for just a couple dollars each, you'll end up with two beautiful candles, which by the way, these will make awesome gift ideas if you're looking to get a head start on DIY holiday or hostess gifts. So once the wax is getting all liquid and melted, go ahead and pull out the wick. I used some kitchen tongs to do this and then just pulled it straight and it does cool and dry quickly. I'm going to use these jars now that you guys just saw me haul in my last Dollar Tree haul and I'm going to be adding some lavender essential oil into the melted wax. Although I only did a few drops and the smell is very very light so you might want to consider adding a bit more, a, bit, a few more drops maybe. Um, also I did it while the wax was very hot and melted and it might have still been too hot and that can cause the oils to evaporate so it would be best to let the wax cool at least a little bit before adding in your essential oils. All right, so I've got my candle wick propped up here how I want before I pour the wax in. You can use whatever you have on hand to do this. I just kind of created something here with tongs and another candle I had just to kind of get the wick to stand up straight in position and then slowly pour your wax in so that you don't cause the wick to move or out of place or fall. Let that set up and fully cool, and then you can go back and cut the wick down to the height you want once your candle is cool. I actually moved a little bit too quickly, and the edge of my tongs fell onto the candle and just dented the soft wax because it wasn't 100% cooled when I moved it. So move slowly, don't rush. Then you can add a label if you want, or you can just print a word with the oil-based glass writer Sharpies that I'm using here. I will leave a link for these in the description box down below. And this kind of gives it something of a Ray Dunn inspired look, if that's something you're into. I also think just simple printing like this is probably the easiest way to write neatly on the glass. I also cut a little piece of twine to make the optional but so cute little bow on here and I love how this turned out. For this next one now, I was inspired by a larger piece of wall art I saw online and I decided to create somewhat of a mini version of this as like a piece for my decor. You'll need eight or nine of these large popsicle craft sticks that Dollar Tree carries and you're going to use some scissors to cut the ends off so that they're square instead of round. You'll also need some paint. Dollar Tree does carry some acrylic ones, although you can also get other chalk paints online, which you may already have if you've been doing much crafting lately. I actually wanted a combination of lighter and darker shades, and I'll leave the links for everything I used in the description box down below if you're looking for ideas, but you can certainly use whatever you have on hand or whatever you like. So for the six pieces that we cut the ends on, I painted two of them a light color two a medium color, and two in darker colors. And then I went back and brushed some dark effects and streaks onto the light ones, and some light strokes onto the darker pieces. There's not really a perfect way to do this, it just adds a nice little antique weathered aging effect. Once those were dry, I came back with a chalk marker to write on the dark ones and my oil-based black Sharpie to write on the lighter ones. You can print or write in script. You can use some of the stencils that Dollar Tree carries to do this if you're not confident in just handwriting on here. Or you can look at a picture, trace, or just practice your lettering even like on a piece of scrap paper or even on an extra popsicle stick. That's kind of what I did here just to get your method down before you actually attempt doing it on the ones that you painted. This way you know kind of the size you want your lettering to be and you can just experiment a little bit with your style. To complete this then, you'll need two or three popsicle sticks for the back, 
whichever way you like it better and you can paint them the color that you want or I actually ended up just going through the package of popsicle sticks and selecting the darker shades of wood that were in there and that was good enough. Then I lined up my pieces where I wanted them and hot glued everything into place. And I think this looks so cute. You could write a message on here, something seasonal, maybe the names of your family members or even significant dates, birthdays, anniversaries, anything at all. And it just kind of looks like a little farm fence or something. So cute. For the next one, I'm using one of these tall glass jars from Dollar Tree, although you could pretty much do this with any type of mason jar. I used hot glue to make little dots of glue on the glass around the top and bottom edge like this. I was aiming for roughly like one inch apart. You could measure if you want. I just kind of did what looked good to me. They probably actually ended up being a little bit closer together than one inch and that's okay. But if you can try to make sure that you're lining up the top and bottom dots the same. So for every dot you have on top, you have another dot below it on the bottom. Okay, so once that's dry now, and this honestly dries in a matter of minutes, you'll need some twine. And I'm starting with a little dab of some hot glue on the end of the twine, right on top of one of the glue dots here in order to keep it in place while we get started. As soon as that's dry, go ahead and weave your twine down around the next bottom dot and then back up to the next top dot. Add a little glue, let that harden and then to keep it in place and then repeat. It will be dry very quickly, then wind back down around the next bottom dot, back up to the next top dot, add a little bit of glue and just keep going like that, alternating like this as you go. And then we'll come back doing the same thing on the alternate dots so that we end up with like a crisscrossing pattern. Hopefully that makes sense and you can kind of see what I'm doing here and see what the finished product should look like. But once that's finished, you can then neaten up the top and bottom edges a couple different ways. So I tried braiding the twine and hot gluing it around the bottom to cover the glue and the edges of the twine. And I really needed to go around and around um, with multiple layers of twine braids. It looks okay, but it was so time consuming. I don't really recommend it unless you like braiding things or you love the braided look. I was getting really tired of braiding twine, I'm not gonna lie. So around the top, I just wrapped the twine over and over using hot glue to keep it all in place. And I think it actually looks not that much different than the braided twine looks on the bottom, but it was a whole lot quicker to do. Alternatively, you could use some of Dollar Tree's nautical rope to do this, which would possibly be the fastest, prettiest, and most efficient way to do this. Unfortunately, I ran out of it, so I had to make do with the twine, but if you do have the nautical rope, consider giving that a try. I still think this turned out so beautiful, and leave me a comment and let me know if you think it looks better as a flower vase or as a candle holder. Either way, I think it works great with farmhouse decor and it even works with beachy coastal themed decor as well, especially if you're using the nautical rope around the edges or maybe filling it in with seashells. So that's all I have for you guys today. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and let me know which one was your favorite. Also, if you're new here, don't forget to click that red subscribe button and also the little bell so you will be notified whenever I upload something new. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon in the next one. Bye.